Smile and learn. Do you know how scientists discover new things? Well, not exactly. You're in luck, Smiley. Because today we're going to learn one of the best tricks, the scientific method. The scientific method is the steps we follow to investigate and understand the world. It gives us the most reliable information possible. Then, we can use it to build knowledge. Thanks to this method, scientists have made great discoveries throughout history that have saved millions of lives. The steps of the scientific method are Question Research Hypothesis Experiment Observe and collect data Analyze and conclude Let's take a closer look Question It all starts with a question. Imagine we want to know which type of chocolate melts faster. White chocolate, milk chocolate, or dark chocolate? That's our question. Interesting, right? Research The next step is to research. We can read scientific books and magazines, search the internet for reliable sources, or ask experts about the subject. This information helps us to better understand our question. We also learn about variables or the factors that can affect it. I talk to the expert bakers and research the ingredients of different types of chocolate online. Hypothesis Now it's time to make a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess about what we think will happen based on the information we have. For example, if our research shows that white chocolate has the most fat and the fat melts easily, we can say that white chocolate melts faster because it has more fat. This is our hypothesis. Experiment Next, we put our hypothesis to the test with an experiment. In this experiment, we will put an equal sized piece of each type of chocolate on three equal plates. Then, we will leave them in the sun. We can use a stopwatch to see how long it takes each one to melt. Sometimes it's interesting to repeat the same experiment in different situations. For example, we can put the three types of chocolate in the microwave or boiling water and see if the results are the same. Sometimes experiments don't turn out as we expect, and that's okay. Trial and error is an important part of the scientific method. We can learn a lot from our mistakes and make changes so that the next time goes better. Observe and collect data. We observe what happens and record it. How long did it take each piece of chocolate to melt? Which one melted first? Was it always the same one? Analysis Let's analyze the data. We can compare the time it took for each type of chocolate to melt and represent it visually on a bar graph. Graphs visually represent our data. Was our hypothesis correct? Conclusion Finally, we make a conclusion. If the white chocolate melted the fastest and we know information about its ingredients, we can say that the hypothesis was correct. White chocolate melts faster because it has more fat. So, this is the scientific method. It's the best way to discover and understand the world. 
try it and become great scientists. See you next time. Oh my, Smiley! How long have you been eating that apple? It's gone brown! Oops! I forgot I was eating it! Yuck! A moment ago, the inside was white! And now it's brown! Gross! <laughs> oh, how silly of me! Leaving it out in the air for so long, the apple has oxidized! Oxidation is a type of chemical reaction, but there are many more. Would you like to know more? Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about them! Did you know that the matter around us is constantly changing? These changes can be physical or chemical. Physical changes refer to changes in state, shape, or movement, and chemical changes refer to the transformation of matter. Chemical changes, also called chemical reactions, are processes in which one or more substances, called reactants, combine to form one or more new substances, called products. When a chemical reaction occurs, the initial substance doesn't keep the same properties or appearance. Join me in discovering the three most important types of chemical reactions. Oxidation, Combustion, and fermentation. Oxidation. Oxidation is a chemical reaction that occurs when a substance combines with oxygen and transforms into a new substance called an oxide. For example, when the iron in a lock comes into contact with oxygen for a long time, it oxidizes and turns into iron oxide. The most common type of oxidation is what happens to something when it's in contact with air or water for a long time. But it can also happen to food that we leave out in the open, like your apple, Smiley! <laughs> Combustion Combustion is a chemical reaction that occurs when a combustible material, like gasoline, burns as it combines with an oxidizer, like oxygen in the air and an energy source, like a spark or flame. This reaction generates a flame, which releases a lot of heat and light and produces new substances like carbon dioxide and, in some cases, ashes. In summary, we need three elements for combustion to occur, a fuel, an oxidizer, and in most cases, an energy source. Fermentation Microorganisms like bacteria or yeast cause fermentation reaction. These microorganisms feed on the sugars in certain foods, like flour, and change them. During fermentation, significant changes occur in food. For example, bread dough rises and becomes spongy, or milk turns into yogurt. For this process to occur correctly, the temperature and time must be just right. Now that you know all this, all you need is a lab coat to be real scientists, friends! See you soon! Hello, friends! Today I'm studying pure substances and mixtures. I have an exam next week and I need to work hard. Have you ever heard about pure substances and mixtures? Let's begin! We divide substances into pure substances and mixtures. It's important to know how to tell one from another. Let's look at pure substances first. Pure substances Pure substances are composed of one single type of matter or element that have specific properties. For example, water and diamonds are pure substances. In a physical change, the composition of these substances wouldn't be altered. Look at this glass of water. If I place it in the freezer, the water will turn into ice because of the very low temperature. But if I took the glass of water out of the freezer, 
The ice would melt, turning into water again. This is a physical chain, but the substance is still the same. Interesting, right? Now, let's take a closer look at mixtures. Mixtures. A mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances. There are two types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Let's look closer at each one of these two groups. In homogeneous mixtures, it's impossible to pick out each component. They are not visible to the eye. Solutions like water with salt or chocolate milk are homogeneous mixtures. Can you think of another example of a food that is a homogeneous mixture and that we use a lot in cooking? Mayonnaise is a great example. It's made with eggs, oil, and salt. In this case, substances can be found in any state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. An example of this would be water with oil or salad. I'm trying to write all this down. I don't want to miss anything. Would you like to practice what we learned? Come on, let's classify these substances and mixtures together. What do we have here? Wow, chocolate milkshake. What kind of substance or mixture is it? This chocolate milkshake is a homogeneous mixture because its components can't be seen with the naked eye. It's water. Hmm, can you remember what type of substance is water? Water is a pure substance because in a physical change, its composition would stay the same. One more. This is a tomato, lettuce, and corn salad. It looks so yummy. How would we classify this as a substance or a mixture? This salad is a heterogeneous mixture because we can clearly see all components with the naked eye. Way to go! You did great! Thank you for helping me study for my exam. I'm sure I'm going to score well. See you soon! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.